Hello everyone and welcome to the Music Is Life podcast. My name is Eileen McLean. Now it just came to my attention that I've barely done any of these intros over the last couple of weeks. Um, so I do apologise for that. Um, over the last couple of episodes we've had so many cool and talented musicians on. We've had Pull the Range, Soppy, we've had Skinyard on and on today's episode we have Cassata Folk and enjoy. To get like a little bit of an introduction, what music did you all listen to when you were teenagers? Uh, would you like us to go uh, one by one? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, just whatever. Present yourself first, maybe. Well, yeah, uh, that's true. Uh, I'm Nicolas. Uh, we are uh, too many Nikos here at the band, so <laughs> that's maybe a problem, but I play ball drum or uh, percussion. And, uh, well, I think my first uh, love uh, band was Iron Maiden. And okay. then I started to listen so much uh, heavy metal and progressive rock music. Uh, the Irish came uh, later. Oh, that's so cool. So you were very much a rock fan back then. Um, yeah, I think. <laughs> And what about the uh, the others? What did you all listen to as teenagers? ¿Qué solías escuchar cuando eras adolescente? Sí. Uh, hi, my name is Nicolás. Blue um, um, Rock, the Mississippi, Vieja Loca, Papo. <laughs> National Rock mostly. Uh, oh, okay. Um, National Rock band from from Argentina. Yeah. Um, okay. DC, Guns N' Roses, uh, Speed. Yeah, actually, you told me that uh, the first introduction you had for the or Celtic music, was um, an ACC song, Thunderstruck, if I'm not wrong. Thunderstruck, the, the ACC song where they have a, a, a Scottish bagpipe. Uh, no, uh, it's a long way to the top. A long way to the top. Ah, oh, yeah. Uh, I, I'm I'm talking for him because he, his English is not that good, but uh, <laughs> he once told me that he refers intro- his first introduction to, to Celtic music was... Um, Along with to the top from ACDC, they have a Scottish backpipe in, on the song, and he even bought an Irish and, and a Scottish backpipe to play that song with a few friends. They oh. used to have a, a rock band, and he bought one to to play that song on a gig. Oh wow, that's so cool! <laughs> De hecho, Bon Scott, the cantante de ACDC, is a Scottish, yeah. And por eso, eh, ah, ese fue mi primer. Eh, introducción a la música holandesa a vos cosas yeah yeah it's exact- saying that Bon Scott the, the former singer right the first singer yeah. of ACC mm-hmm. he was yeah. Scottish yeah they're actually all from Scotland originally well, yeah. There, yeah which is so cool <laughs> and how about yourself what did you listen to when you were a teenager um, I'm Emiliano. I didn't say my name. I played the Wazuki on the band. Um, while I was a teenager, I mostly heard um, metal, the same as Nicolás. Um, mostly national bands and power metal bands, Nightwish, Stratovarius, Sonata Artica, um, and some bands from Argentina uh, too. Rata Blanca is a very well known. Uh, power metal band from from this country and my first first introduction to irish music was a song by by a band called rhapsody a power metal from band from italy and they had a song called uh, elnor's magic valley and they play the coolest reel that's the first real uh, irish tune that i ever heard um from from that moment, I knew that there was something different in that melody compared to what we usually are, what we are usually used to to listen as medieval music, and um, that started everything. That's so cool, and it's amazing that all three of you were very much into like heavy metal and hard yeah. work at the time, and then you like changed into and you got listening into Irish folk music and now you're an Irish folk band that's quite a journey that you three have been on 
Yeah, it's um, at least for I, I don't know if you listen to to heavy metal in general, but uh, most of the different genres of metal have a big influence on folk music, uh, mostly well, folk metal bands, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> um, but metal in general, uh, even power metal that is not that uh, that folk, but it has a lot of of different elements from folk music. And a lot of bands also use uh, acoustic instruments, acoustic mm. folk instruments, especially yeah, cause... Suki, Hoji Gerti. Yeah, because it's, it's actually like so connected, isn't it? Like there's a lot of influence in the lot in like heavy metal music to folk music that people don't appreciate. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So how old were you all when you first started playing instruments? Were you quite young? A qué edad empezaron a tocar instrumentos? Um, yeah, I think I started playing drums at uh, 13 years old, maybe. Oh. Uh, well, and then uh, maybe at, uh, I'm not sure, 18 or 19 years old, I started to play some of uh, tin whistle and percussion in general. How old are you now? Uh, 23. <laughs> That's uh, an important uh, note. Um, since I 12, I think. Since 12? Yes. Playing harmonica? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I bought my first harmonic um, uh, from, a, from a friend. So is it? Yeah, from a friend. Mm -hmm. uh, he sold me. Uh, for five pesos. Five pesos? <laughs> 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 like a few cents. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You've been playing since you were 12. How, how old are you now? I'm 31. 31? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. It's a long way, it's a long way to the top. <laughs> <laughs> and how about yourself? How old were you when uh, you... I started playing uh, guitar and accordion, melodion, uh, when I was about 14, mm. 13, 14. My, my father played the, the piano accordion and had a guitar and, at home. So I started with that, but never found myself on, with, the, with the guitar. And a few, few years after that, around when I was 19, 20, I I bought a mandolin, and with that mandolin I started playing Irish music. Oh, that that's really cool. So you've all been playing music for majority of your life as well. And the most important question is, how did you all meet and become a band? How did we meet? Como nos conocimos? Um, <laughs> that's that's my story actually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Basically, the story of how we met, uh, to sum it up, is that when I bought that that mandolin, uh, I actually went to buy uh, an ukulele, uh, and I bought it, but I didn't like it. I I liked the the mandolin more. And we had a few friends. Uh, one friend that played the whistle, uh, another one that played the guitar, and we just started practicing some tunes for us just playing while we were chilling on, on a Saturday. And with time, we started liking what we were doing. And we started to share some posts on Facebook, I think they, it was, uh, looking for members. Huh? And some papers on, on the different thing, universities. Uh, we have some musical uh, universities here in our city and we've been sharing some some flyers and, and papers on the walls uh, that we were looking for members for musicians and we gave to every people that reached out to us uh, we gave them three sets but now now that i think about it it's a lot it's a lot <laughs> for a new member that never played to give them three complete sets of eight, nine tunes nine so tunes well. and so Wow. It was a set, a set of hornpipes, a set of jigs, and mm. a set of reels. And, a challenge. Yeah, quite a challenge. <laughs> yeah, and, that is a challenge. <laughs> yeah. And we asked for them if they wanted to join 
to try their best uh, trying to learn those melodies and come to a, to one of our practices and that's the way we met Nico from the harmonica and I think that's the way we met you right um a friend uh, ah. sent you a video yeah uh, a, f a friend of him uh, sent us a video of him playing and you were playing a tune actually uh, I I don't remember what uh, the Silver video was Spear. So, ah Silver Spear Spear or Spear 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 <laughs> and he was playing a reel and now immediately we said no this guy's this guy come with us <laughs> this guy <laughs> has to play with us and the history about the other Nico I don't know if you want to tell it uh, yeah why not um well, uh, they were organizing, uh, or well, they made uh, some kind of events uh, when uh, with other bands uh, of the same style. And well, I just start to uh, an Irish session, session. Yes, an Irish session. Mm -hmm. So I started to go to listen and maybe play. I was um, trying to play the the tin whistle, so I uh, I'm not sure. I started to play and to uh, talk to him, to them. Uh, then I started to play the spoons because uh, it was uh, easy and cheap and funny. Um, <laughs> and, well, they uh, decided to uh, give me a ball drum, so I started to play uh, actually a ball drum three years ago. Oh, wow. And, well, and now we are playing together. Uh, that's a nice story. That is. Oh, that's such a lovely story as well. And can I ask you guys, why did you? Why do you play Irish music? Because I didn't even know that there was a big kind of Irish scene in Argentina. Like, why did you decide to play Irish folk music? Actually, we are a few bands here. Um, mm. We it's at least five, six of us. La, in here in our city, yes, La Plata, right. we are uh, three bands now: uh, Caminantes de Finisterre, us. And maybe now the, the Lucas and Edoras. And Edoras. Yeah. Uh, but from Buenos Aires, the, the capital city of Argentina, there are like six, eight bands. Yeah. We are not that much, maybe like in, in Ireland, but we're a few. And we have some more on, on Patagonia, on the south part of Argentina. Um, I, I don't I don't have an actual reason why I started playing Irish music. I think that I always loved the the medieval sound of music, the folk sound of European music, mm -hmm. but I never knew the difference between Celtic music, medieval music, and Irish music, Scottish music. So with time, we learned the difference, and we knew that that specific style we loved uh, was the the Irish part. Um, so we just started to to learn and play it. Uh, we also noticed that it's not not to um, to say the least of it, but it's pretty easy to mash up between musicians, especially for beginners musicians, that only you have to learn a basic melody and you can play together with other musicians with no need for for music theory knowledge or or much practice. At least that was my reason. I don't know if you have. Any other comment on that? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I just uh, love that uh, folk metal music bands, uh, for example, Tengwar or Skiltron mm -hmm. bands from Argentina who mix uh, some Celtic Scottish music with um, with metal music. And so I started to, uh, I just want to play a, a different instrument because uh, well, I used to play drum, but uh, uh, it's uh, a lot of. Uh, I'm not sure. Muy uh, ruidoso, cómo sería. Very noisy. It, yes, it's very noisy to play drums. So I just want to play uh, something quiet. Some, yes, and yeah. well, I uh, I came to the tin whistle, and well, uh, then I started to play traditional music because if you wanna sound uh, good at a whistle, you must learn uh, Irish music or uh, Irish folk. From a loud noise to a high pitch noise. 
<laughs> I'm not sure it was a good decision, but <laughs> <laughs> it was. And I think it's so right what you said that the amazing thing about traditional music is you don't need much of the musical theory. You can all just jam together and you mm -hmm. can just play together as well. Like there isn't as much pressure to be perfect. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, that, that also helped a lot um, bringing people to the, to the Irish scene here. Uh, we are a few bands, as I told you, but we are not many players and we usually do the well, uh, they did used to do the same thing on, on Ireland, uh, mixing the members of each band and creating new bands. Yeah. And we are actually um, almost doing the same here. But uh, the, the folk music, at least Irish music, is a little easier for for a new person, a new musician to, to jump into, yeah. um, especially for guitar players maybe. And it sounds as well, from what you've said, that traditional Irish or Scottish music is on the rise in Argentina too. And you're part of that movement, which is so cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah it's been really quiet lately uh, for the last years. And um, since we started doing the, the Irish session here in our city, um, most and most people started knowing about it. Uh, most people just know it about for from movies or stuff like that. Um, we usually give the same reference to everyone. Like, uh, do you see Titanic? Yeah, <laughs> I remember when they go downstairs and play with the, and dance with the poor people. Yeah, well, that's the music we play. Oh, I love that. <laughs> we get always the same reaction with the same with the same oh. story. But oh, wow. yeah, it increased a lot lately. <laughs> and what's your favorite um tunes to play do you like playing jigs or do you like doing the slow airs or are you more into reels like what's your favorite mm, a genre from Irish music from tunes mm -hmm. um for me for the instruments i play my favorites are uh, reels uh, okay. especially for the mandolin and and the banjo uh, they can be played faster and I don't have to think much about the the six eight, so it's a little <laughs> more, a little easier. Mm. Uh, I don't know what's what's your favorite genre. You know, favorito polka reel. Uh, reel polka. Reels, reels and polkas. Reels and polkas. For the harmonica. Um, what what is? I what? like uh, um, play, uh, play fast. Fast, yeah. And the reel, uh, como que me deja... Yeah, it allows you to play faster, mm -hmm. the reel. Yeah. Yeah. Nico with the harmonica, he loves to play really fast, and and the reels allow him to, to play that fast. Oh, so... Oh, that's cool. So you're, you're more into the fast tempo side of the traditional mm -hmm. music, none of the slow yeah. ears. It's all about, yeah, playing fast. No, no, not at all. Well, we don't even play in any air or something like that. We make, <laughs> do you know? We play an Irish jig, Grafa uh, Group. Uh, mm. I don't think it's Irish. I think it's from another country. But we play it very slowly at first, and then we play it really fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hard. Yeah, it's hard not to play fast, though, isn't it? Even if it is mm. like a slow air, but you can't help yourself. You just want to play fast as well. Yeah, and if every musician in the band, or at least those that are playing at the moment, uh, have the endurance to play faster, uh, we end up playing faster and faster each time. Until someone says, please stop, go slower. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I broke my, uh, my <laughs> muscles in my right arm uh, last week. Uh, but, well, yeah, uh, I love to play uh, strange uh, tunes, like 7-8 uh, tunes, or, well, that kind of music that actually, that's not Irish music. But uh, I think uh, Casata, our band, uh, it seems to uh, play like uh, that uh, Daft uh, Punk song, uh, which says, um, stronger, better, faster. faster. <laughs> <laughs> that's... <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and 
And how did you get your name, Kisata Folk? Have I have I saying that correctly? I hope I am. I'm really sorry if I haven't. Just plain Casata. Casata, the, the name uh, Casata comes from uh, it's an Italian desert uh, dessert. Um, we know it here in Argentina as an ice cream, uh, an ice cream with three flavors. Uh, we are it's three. like a, yeah, we are three. <laughs> and we had the idea <laughs> to flavors. to give each of us a flavor of of ice cream and <laughs> switch the colors of the of the ice cream to the to the colors of the Ireland flag. And yes. um, we also are descendants from Italy, uh, from Italian families, oh, uh, the three okay. of us. So it was a good relation uh, between the the colors of the flag, the concept of the three flavored uh, ice cream, and our ascendancy from from Italy. Oh, that's so interesting. That's actually really sweet as well. That you're already honoring your heritage as well with your favorite style of music playing that's so cool <laughs> yeah so what was the first ever show that you three played as cassata folk we actually never played live have you that... not no we didn't yet no we oh. had a, we almost had a show uh just right before the covid mm -hmm. um due to covid was cancelled and after the the, the quarantine, uh, we met together and started playing this year again around July, June, more yeah, or less. Um, we had um, a, a gig for last week, but Nico, the percussionist, had tendinitis, and he can he couldn't play. So <laughs> we we missed the second day uh, gig we had, but we didn't play yet on, on live. What we do is uh, we we stream our mm -hmm. our practices on Twitch, on Casata underscore uh, folk. Uh, that's our Twitch where every time we we have a, a practice here at home, uh, we we stream it and share with people. It's so almost like our live version. Yeah. Yeah, because I was going to ask as well. Um, did COVID? Because I mean, obviously, with COVID, it cancelled everything, like live shows, traveling, lockdowns. Is that one of the main reasons that you use social media to stream your music? Uh yeah, yeah. Um, we we been talking just today about that. Um, it's getting a little difficult to to get uh, a show here. Mm -hmm. um, there are not many places, and most places have a lot of, um, like, I don't know how to say, but the, the government is not allowing to to do much. Uh, uh, like restrictions. Shows. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they mostly are outside, and not every place has a place, an open place for people to play. And sometimes uh, people play on the street, um, it's it's getting diff very difficult to to get some some shows lately, and that's basically the reason we are trying to focus mostly on social media, streaming when we play, recording some videos, and grabbing some video from that stream, uh, cutting them and republishing them on on, on YouTube or Instagram. So social media is really essential for you just now because of the restrictions in Argentina for live performances as well. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. at least for now, it's the only media that we have to, to show ourselves and to people, to get, what, them, to get them to know us. What social media platform do you prefer to stream on? Um, like, do you prefer Twitch over Instagram, or do you prefer YouTube over all of them? Do you have a preference? Um, for now, we are uh, streaming on Twitch. Um, I also stream, uh, but my my gaming and chatting stuff right, from my side, regardless of of the band. And I started streaming on YouTube, but the engagement is pretty hard for for newcomers. Um, we I I ended up switching to to Twitch for my personal stuff, 
Um, when we decided to start streaming with Casata, I thought that the best option we had was Twitch too. Uh, mm -hmm. Especially for the quality, uh, the quality of the stream uh, compared to Instagram, for example. Um, Instagram has a very low quality and we have to stream using our phones. Um, it's quite hard to stream using a, a dedicated microphone. And on Twitch, we can use that this same microphone we are using now to, to speak with you. And we can set up a better camera. Um, um, it's, it's better for quality, overall quality. It's, it's actually interesting that you say that you use Twitch to stream your music because most of um, the guests I've had on in the past or anyone I've spoken to that's a musician, they always use Instagram and you're the first band that I've yeah. so far that's ever used Twitch. Like, what is Twitch? I've never used it, sorry, but I will use it now. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, what is Twitch? Yeah, you should check it out. Uh, mm. It's grown a lot lately, uh, especially with the pandemic and... Uh, uh, the, the 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 issue with Instagram mostly is the quality. The, it depends a lot on, on the quality of your microphone, the the, the microphone on your phone. Um, you are not able to use a different microphone or camera. Um, that's the main reason we decided to use Twitch. Uh, but anyway, lastly, uh, always Twitch was a, a gaming platform, mostly focused on gaming. But with the pandemic, a lot of people started to to work and share their their work on, on Twitch. Uh, besides gamers, uh, a lot of musicians, DJs, um, people that just talk and have postcards or stuff like that. You should check it out. You could get some some people from there too. Yeah, I'll need to for sure because. I've I've heard of it, but I've never really checked it out. But I will check it out um, after this interview. Have you done any other collaborations at all with any other musicians that you've met? Alguna otra colaboración con otros músicos? Mostly the Irish session. Mm -hmm. uh, we organize it here in our city, and uh, musicians from our other bands, bands that been playing here in the city for a long time, they join us. Um, they played the William Pipes, uh, the whistles, guitar, violin, concertina, concertina, yeah. Um, but yeah, mostly of what we've been doing with other musicians was the session. And now a few, of, a group of friends we have are organizing a slow session for new people, new musicians, and we are trying to to help them on that too. Oh, nice. That's so cool. And that's even like more of an intro as well then for people into the traditional music scene too. Sorry, can you go in? Um, I was just saying that that's a really good idea as well, that you can do the slow session because, oh, yeah. yeah, because as you know yourself, it can be very, very fast and it can be very hard um, mm -hmm. to play sometimes. So sometimes you do need a wee slow session. <laughs> yeah, that actually that's what we've been talking on the on the last slow session we had. Uh, that the idea session requires a minimal level of of knowing a certain amount of tunes, a uh, certain level of skill on the instrument, and knowledge about the genre. Um, mm. Some people that just just started uh, are very limited to participate on on an actual idea session. And this low session is a very good help for them. Yeah, for sure. Like, what's the plans for your band? What what dreams do you have, or um, what plans do you have for the future? Plans for the future. Do you want me to keep talking, or do you want to talk? You want to say something? Come on, come on, you can do it. <laughs> <I'm not sure. laughs> uh, I think we would like to uh, record uh, record some. Uh, some uh, tunes. Uh, I mean, we have, uh, I think, like uh, an hour of uh, music uh, which we uh, could uh, record. And, I don't know. Uh, um, take it to Spotify or uh, all that uh, media. Um, 
Yeah, I think that for now we are for on one side trying to play live. We are really we want to play live at least once. Mm -hmm. We've been doing so much work and effort on learning and setting these these versions we have for for these sets, and we want to show them live, play live, and enjoy that. And also, we are trying to focus on recording. Because we have, as Nico said, around one hour of music, we can have 12, 12 sets, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's almost a complete album. And the idea, at least for now, is try to get it some gigs and start working on recording, at least for, I don't know, uh, January, February, next year, maybe, yeah. and have something to listen on, on Spotify, at least for us. Well, I'm really excited. Like, honestly, yours are so talented. Like, it's just so refreshing to hear Irish traditional music again. Not that, it's, not that it's ever disappeared or anything, but it's it's just so refreshing to hear it from the other side of the world as well. <laughs> and yeah. also, actually, I was going to say, like, because I've never really heard the harmonica being played a lot in traditional music. So it's really cool that you've incorporated the harmonica into your sets. Well, thank you. <laughs> yes, yes, not that very popular. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> that's one of the maybe the main reasons that our our group sounds so particular. Uh, the <clears throat> the formation we have is not that popular. Buzuki, Vadran, and, and harmonica. Uh, I don't know any other players besides uh, Gene, the the guy from uh, from yes. Netherlands. Yeah, there was a guy from Netherlands. I don't remember his name. Gene, Gene no, Burns. Burns. Uh, that guy is an amazing player, and he plays Buzuki and harmonica at the same time. And we stole so so much from him, <laughs> and learned <laughs> a lot from him too. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's it's quite a a real formation of traditional music but it's like it's a new oh, i'm trying to think of the word for it like a modern day take on it yeah which is really cool like it's really refreshing to see oh thank you that that means you've thank been you listening so to us <laughs> <laughs> i have i'm a fan i'm attention. a fan guys <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you thank you very much yeah, that, that was one of the main uh, reasons and objectives we had with Casata to try to avoid those tunes that uh, were mostly more traditional, more uh, related to, to the Irish session, like the classic and most basic um, jigs and reels that, besides that, we play them a lot on the sessions <laughs> and we don't want to play them anymore. Um, we wanted to, to grasp those tunes that have a particular sound and that sounds strange um, besides being part of the, the Irish uh, repertoire. Mm. Uh, but yeah, we, try, we also have a list of all the tunes that have uh, strange metrics, the seven eights and stuff like that. And we try to choose from that, that list. Do any of you sing at all? Sorry? Like, do any of you sing? Are you vocalist at all? Uh, or are you just no. pure instrumentalist? No, pure instrumentalist. Uh, we don't sing. <laughs> no. Do you think you would maybe introduce some vocals, maybe? Or is it you're just going to keep it purely instrumental? Uh, at least for me, I, um, yeah, instrumental mostly. I think that maybe the guys like it, but uh, at least Casata will always be instrumental. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. And just for the future, um, do you have any, and hopefully like when COVID kind of settles down and we can all travel a bit more freely, um, are you going to set up a tour at all? Because I think it'd be really cool if you came over to Scotland to play. That would be yeah. so cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually actually one of the the ideas we have at least uh, from my side i'm planning to to move to live in europe um have no no definite plan yet uh, i we want first of all to to be able to record the album that we want and after that i will 
try to to move over there. Mm-hmm. And I think that the guys, both Nikos, are dealing with the with the papers. We have the the nationality from Italy, from from our families, and we can get the passport from that. And I think that with time, we all will be able to to someday travel and maybe go to live over there. And that would be awesome to to go from country to country, playing and visiting. At least I want to play on a night session in Ireland. Yeah, yeah, you have to, you have to. It's really yeah, cool. Mm. And if you ever play Scotland, you will need to play this uh, folk festival called Celtic Connections. I don't know if you've heard of it. I think I did. Celtic Connections, an event on awesome. Scotland. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think it sounds to me, but uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, you de- like check it out, and there'll be loads of like YouTube videos of all the bands that have played. But um, that would be a really cool festival for you to play if you ever played in Scotland in the future. Nice. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. I could actually give you a, a good few places to play in Scotland, in Glasgow, oh. where I'm from, that you could play your uh, traditional sets. That, that would be very useful. Yeah, there you, there you go. So whenever you're touring, just let me know and I will help you out with where to go in Scotland. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you can share that on, we're talking through Instagram, right? Uh, yeah. Instagram chat. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I will do that. Well, guys, that's the end of the interview, and it's honestly been amazing talking to all of you.